the DeQuinder family, the Kempaw family, and Willie Owens were all slave owners. Okay, all three of them. They had a daughter named Isabel, and they bought Belle Isle from the Macombs and named it after their daughter Isabel. Belle Isle is named after their daughter Isabel. Before that, it was called Ile Ocouchon, which is French for Hog Island because the, the Macombs used it to, as a farming area and they placed their hogs there. And the hogs being there got rid of all the snakes that used to live on there because hogs eat everything, including snakes. And they don't worry, and venom don't, don't kill a hog. So, so, snake venom don't kill a hog. Yeah, it's something. Snake venom does not kill a hog. Yeah, so, it's something with, they, it's something with their uh, nervous system. Right. That allows them to digest right. it and be fine. Snake venom will kill a lion. A, 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 well, snake they have blood their money has started the Michigan Intelligentsia and Democratic Free Press, just so you know. That's who started the newspaper. So whose daughter was it, Isabella? Isabella, that's the Camp Campaign and the Quinders daughter. Camp on So, yes, again, the money that founded the Detroit Free Press came from Camp on the Quinder and John R. Williams. Wow. The answer lies within they were the slave street owners. sign. And they were anti-black. And they were pro-Confederate. Uh, what's the last name, John R? John Williams. But, of course, Williams, you might see it. It's spelled so the same way. you're tracing your ancestry. Williams. The answers are in the street sign name. Okay. Wow. Oh, sure. where the riot occurred. But they destroyed that one in 1870. After the Civil War, they destroyed that one and built another one. That's the one they got there. They, they built a new that one. Center. And it kind of looks Hall. like the Wayne County building. That was, so that, so there you see the Wayne County building right there. With the copper top, copper and green top. That's the Wayne County That's building. Like the it it kind of looked like that. That's how the old city hall, not the original one, but the old city hall looked. That one, the old city hall was destroyed in the 1950s when they built to the count, county building. So they destroyed the old city hall, built the new city, they built the new city county building, and that became the new city hall, which is now known as the Coleman A. Young Municipal Center. That, that was built in the 1950s. They tore that one down in the 1950s. But just so you know, in 1924, the Ku Klux Klan marched from um, Michigan State Fair down Woodward. I mean a real mile, I don't mean five people, I mean a, a parade, Ku Klux Klan parade from Michigan State Fair all the way to um, City Hall and burned the cross in front of City, City Hall in 1924. In 19 what? 24. And where are you getting all your um, your references and resources? Oh, yeah, so, so some of the resources that you can find, a lot of this information from, you're going to have to do some research, number one. Go to the Detroit Public Library who have, they have a research section, uh, research department, you can go there and get a lot of information. Another good reference, especially for a beginner, would be um, the Detroit Almanac uh, by, by Bill McGraw and Peter Garvilo Garvilovich. That's another good uh, introductory source of information. Bill McGraw, it's just his name is all you probably need. But the, it's I called just, the Detroit Almanac. I just bought that from a, 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 a reseller. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 got mine, I get mine from a used bookstore. Yeah. Yeah. You can find them. They generally are at the used bookstore. Or the but Library I, of Congress, you think, will have something? Yeah, there? a lot of stuff and you can get from the Library of Congress. You can get almost anything from the Library right. of Congress. So. Another good source would be Forgotten Detroit. Yes. I don't know a, who the author is. Yeah, that's a good one. Forgotten Detroit. Yeah. Right, Forgotten Detroit. Forgotten Detroit. Yeah, that's a good one. It goes into the the hidden agendas and all that, you know, what we don't uh, see every day. And then there's... Well, we uh, do see every day, but don't know what it is. But I'll look at like this great looking, nice little park. And it's all pretty and they got the little fountain, got the beach area. And then in the wintertime, there's the skating over there where the grass is. That's where the ice skating is. Um, it didn't know, it, this was, Campus Marshes means war camp. That's what this was. It's a military camp. Yeah. Right? And so you got to picture it, this dirt and some and some tents and some little campfires and the military doing their military exercises and marching and, and cleaning their guns on their way to go to war. The first war being the War of 1812. This became a military camp during the War of 1812. 
All right? And then it, be, it continued to be a military camp during the Civil War. So when you think of those, it just didn't look like this. When the Civil War ended, because Michigan, particularly this area of Michigan, Detroit area, played such a significant role in sending troops into the Civil War that this monument was built, the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. It's a tribute to the military who they believe won the war for the North, particularly those that were sent by Michigan. So it's done in symbols of four. Okay, so the, the artist chose to do symbols of four. He got four heroes with their names and their portraits or their profiles, and you'll see them. And then he has four divisions of the military, cavalry, infantry, navy, and artillery. Then at the top is the symbol of the, and then the women are the symbols of history, emancipation, victory, and union. All right? So victory, because the North won. Union, because the Union was put back together again, the North and the South. Emancipation, because of course, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued during the Civil War. And history, because this was supposed to be something that would tell the future generations what happened a long time ago. Even at the top is Michigania. Her name is Michigania. She's got the, the uh, sword and shield in her hand. And she's a symbol of Michigan's uh, warriors and fighting and victory in the Civil War. And so even though she's this great symbol, at the top, and this is in the 1870s, of course women couldn't vote. Women didn't have equal rights. And I'm not even talking about black women, African Americans. You're not even talking about them. Even white women couldn't vote. Cause, so they used women as symbols of freedom and things like that, but they didn't give women any rights <laughs> to actually uh, exercise any of the freedom that they stand for. So the Statue of Liberty was built at a time that women couldn't vote, and they had no true full liberty. And this was built at a time, so they like using women as symbols, but they didn't let women be the symbols that they were representing. Yeah. yeah. Well, so awesome. we know they didn't let our women be those symbols. They didn't even let their own women. <laughs>